Hello and welcome to MBR's Trail Bike of the Year test. After 18 months away, it's great to be back with eight exciting new trail bikes to put through their paces. Once again, we've split the contenders into two categories, with shop-bought bikes on one side and direct sales brands on the other. And in this video, we're going to be shining the spotlight on the direct sales models. To bring you all the insight from weeks of intensive testing, we have our bike test editor, Alan Muldoon. So Al, it's good to be back. It feels like a long time since we were stood here and uh, talking about the best trail bikes again. Long enough for me to grow my hair and grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm super excited because if anyone's tried to buy a bike, or I mean, if you've looked in the magazine, you've seen the tests, they've not been maybe as, as big as they've been in like previous years. So to have eight bikes in one test in one issue is like, it's phenomenal. And how did you define a trail bike for the purposes of this test? Basically, it's the same as we did 18 months ago. We made a decision to transition to like all 29 inch wheel bikes just because the market was kind of going that way and it keeps all of the bikes the same. Like a lot of these bikes are actually available in both wheel sizes or mixed wheel sizes, but we just wanted to keep it 29 front and rear, keep it simple. And in terms of travel, we're looking at bikes with between 140, 150 mil on the rear and 150 mil, 160 mil up front. And that's kind of like, it's just slightly below what you typically get on an enduro bike, but there is a little bit of crossover for sure. In this direct sales category, every bike has a Fox 36. They're all different 36s, but they've all got 36s on them. Yeah, and yeah. which uh, used to be an enduro fork not exactly. that long ago. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, so before we get into the nitty gritty, do you want to run through quickly what yeah. we've got on the test? Yeah, yeah, so let's start with the cheapest bike, which is the Privateer 141. Obviously, it's a UK brand, full alloy frame, box suspension, pretty progressive geometry. This is actually the longest, as in terms of reach numbers, it's the biggest reach on test. Then we have the most expensive bike, which is the Vitus, the Scarp CRX. That's at 3499. It's the most expensive bike but also it's got all the best bits on it. Like there's every single component on it is one step above. It's like it's in a different category to the other bikes in test, but how that pans out, we'll see later. Then we're looking at the two German brands, kind of similar pricing, but the YT's got an alloy frame and the Canyon CF7. So that's brand new. That's literally just released weeks ago. Yep. You get a full carbon frame with progressive geometry, sizing. That's a really sweet package. Yep. A great lineup of bikes there. Yeah. Shall we work our way through them until yeah. we end up at the winner? Absolutely. So to kick things off, we've got the YT Jeff C, haven't we? Yeah, the Jeff C Core 2. This is the entry level bike in the Jeff C range. It's available in 29 or 27.5, so you've got the option. Probably the first thing we should talk about is the price. This bike is 3212. 21, I think. Some, it's some, a funny price. Yeah, it's a really funny price. And that's the price we used in the magazine because the headline price doesn't include like the import duty and taxes and stuff for getting it to the UK. Alloy frame on this one, yep. is it? Full alloy frame, 150 mil travel front and rear. Although I measured the rear wheel travel in this bike at 140. So okay. it's 10 mil shy of what's claimed, but like we'll get into that in a minute because it doesn't really impact the bike at all because the suspension is really good on it. But their approach is a little bit different. Like you look at the Canyon, has got a carbon frame. Other bikes have got some higher spec. And this bike just looks like it's not quite as competitively priced as the other bikes in the test. And what I want to make clear from the get-go is that I gave this bike an eight and it's not really based on performance because the bike rides really well. And the suspension's really good. It's got a really good feel to it. It's really fun. It's not a high anti-squat bike, so suspension's like really reactive, um, and I really enjoyed riding it. But really, the rating more reflects the value of the bike compared to its rivals. Okay, yeah, yeah. We can yeah. see like th little things like the tires are, are dual compound, aren't they? Yeah, not dual compounds. So you haven't got a three C on the front. You've got the NX drivetrain, so you've got the eleven fifty two tooth cassette. Yep. You don't have the kind of the same ratio, and also it uses a standard free hub body. Yep. So if you, if you wanted to upgrade that at a later date, it's, it's still 12 speed, but it's just heavier. Yeah, it adds it's weight. Big, it's a big chunk but of weight. It's yeah. still not the heaviest bike can test. Yeah, that okay. was the Privateer. Okay. The YTs have always been kind of known for being very progressive, this suspension. Yeah. Is that still But the with case? this shock, because of the way the kind of model years are transitioning, this is the DPX2, so not the new Float X. But when Fox first introduced that shock, 
I wasn't that impressed with it, but I think brands got to know it better and, and there was a lot of options with it. And they really, like now that it's on its way out, they've got it dialed right. and the suspension on this bike feels amazing. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter that it's not the latest version. I, I think maybe it's an advantage that it's not. Cool. Super supple, you can still use all the travel, so not so progressive that you can't get the travel. The bike's really poppy and like, and even with the dual compound rear tire, there's like tons of traction. Okay. Cause I changed the front tire yeah. and the rear tire on the bike to up, up the level of grip, but you could keep the front tire that you have here, use it as a spare for the rear and just put like a 3C up front. Okay, yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, you're talking about sizing a minute ago. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like a massive bike, does it? It isn't, and in fact, it's the shortest reach on test, but YT is the only brand that offers five sizes. So the large is the middle option of five sizes. I can still ride it because the BB is really low. It's got the lowest BB on test, almost by 10 mil. So the bike's still really stable, but when you get into like tight stuff, oh, it, feels, it feels amazing because you're mm. so kind of on the bike and over the front and it's just really reactive. And you've also got the option, like I can ride, you can see how much seat post is sticking yeah. out here. I can, ride the X, I can ride the XL. So YT could go from having the shortest bike in test to the longest bike in test and they'd still have another, they've got a double XL sure. above that. So really it's just, it's not, criticism, it's, it's, just not the, it's just not a criticism. It's not a criticism. Where the sizing falls. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you've got more choice. And they've also got uh, proportional chain stays. It has. Right? Yep. So the XL and the double XL get slightly longer chain stays just to keep the weight distribution balanced on the bikes. Yep. And that might be the reason why this bike measured shy on the travel. Mm -hmm. Maybe the XL and the double XL, because they've got slightly longer stays, they get you closer to that 150 mil yep. travel. And there's a, there's a couple of other things on this bike too. Like I said at the start of the test, They've all got 36s. This bike has the newer, the entry level performance fork. Yeah. And there's been a couple of little changes to it. So it's got the, the kind of channels on the back of the lower legs. Yeah. It doesn't have the bleeders where you just touch on mm -hmm. them and go like tss, 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 to let the, the air out. But you can just do that with an Allen key. And it's also got the new floating axle yeah. on the front. So it's still got a quick release, but you've got a pinch bolt up there so you can line the lowers up perfectly. So it's actually a really smooth fork. And the final change they made to it was they put some detents on the damper because I don't know you remember we've mm -hmm. we've had loads of bikes with the other one and Just you maybe go through across. some bracken or something that would sweep across mm -hmm. whatever this one like it stays where it stays put yep yeah so the components I mean it's, we've got some e13 but then we've yep. got stuff like an in-house dropper yeah I mean the in-house dropper is excellent okay yeah yeah it's got a super light action the lever shape's really nice I was really impressed with it it's also got the SDG Bel Air 3 saddle on it which is good saddle like, test winner like super comfortable you've got SRAM G2 brakes, they're still four piston and they've got 200 mil rotors front and rear. So while they're not the codes, you've got the rotor size. Mm -hmm. um, so they've got plenty of stopping power. All in, I think it's like a really good package. And I like the, like it's, it's quite different to the other bikes in test. I mean, I think it's definitely, it's quite different to the Privateer 141 and the Canyon where they're, they're definitely got like higher anti-squat and more focused on pedaling. On this bike, I actually found I used the the compression lever on the shock just to prop the rear up just for a little bit more support and climbing and then just like open it up for for ripping the descents and then you get like this fully active like nice plush suspension feel to it another little thing that kind of an, that, that annoyed me on this bike was is a little bit rattly but, but there's a bit of noise and i also rub my back foot on the chain stays because they just kind of bulge out a little bit and because it's got a shorty rear end i think it's kind of easy if you've got like long bigger feet just to get a little bit of heel rub and then we go back to the whole sizing. If you sized up one, you get a longer, longer back Yeah, end, you might get more clearance. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, totally. So I think they've ne like it's a, it's a really good bike. Uh, I just think it needs to be more competitively priced. Okay. When you've got bikes that have got like higher spec drivetrains, similar suspension, out and like some of them with carbon frames. Yeah. Um, it just white. You kind of even just a simple thing like the front tire being dual compound, mm. not triple compound. You can't do that when the competition are like sweating yeah. every single yeah, detail. Yeah. But yeah, so this bike, just to make it crystal clear, it wasn't about performance because the performance is first rate on this bike. It was really a value-based decision that it yeah. got an eight. Okay. Right, so next up we've got the Privateer. This is quite an interesting bike, this, isn't it? Tails from down the road. UK through and through. Quite a progressive sort of sizing and geometry and stuff, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, um, So this is the second bike they've made. It's the 141, so it's got 141 mil of travel on the rear. The other one's the 161, so a little bit of Kona. Kind of yeah. asked like the one, like when they did the, 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 yeah, the specific yeah. travels on the bike. Full aluminium frame, 
This is actually the cheapest bike in test. And we'll get into some details on the spec, which, which might be surprising given that it was the cheapest bike in test. It's also the biggest bike in test. It's got the longest reach. And it's also the heaviest bike in test. Not by much, but just a little bit. And their ethos is exactly the same with this bike as it was with the 161 that we tested a couple of issues ago. You put the money into the suspension and the wheels, the things that make a bike great. And I'm not saying the frame's cheap, but when you compare it to the Carbon Canyon, they're on a different level. And just like the 161, it's got a steep seat angle, not quite as steep as the 161, so it actually feels better. It's steep enough, but more neutral. Unless you're riding up really steep and down really steep, all the in-between stuff feels like you're sat too forward. This bike feels totally normal, but it just feels like a big balanced bike. So it's more versatile on, on kind of mellower single yeah. track and stuff like and that. And the numbers it? are really similar. Like the biggest difference in the two bikes is the seat angle and travel. Right. Everything else is pretty okay. similar. And they've even brought over the size specific chainstays. So in 29, this bike's available in three sizes. And then they do a 27.5 version, which is the smallest yeah. size. And all of the bikes have size specific stays on the rear. Size specific rear ends, actually, to be so specific. So they're unique for <laughs> yeah, each yeah. size. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which costs money to do. Yeah. It's not like you're just kind of doing the kind of building it into the front triangle and moving the bottom bracket. They actually just bolt on different rear ends. So okay. um, it's quite impressive. So you mentioned the suspension. So is that uh, all that investment paid off? Yeah, totally. So they've got performance elite level suspension on this bike. And that's quite important because it kind of looks like the entry level stuff because it's all black, but it gets the damping technology from the Kashima coated factory level suspension. On the fork, you've got the grip two damper, you've got the four way adjustable damping, you get all this chassis tech, but it's actually what's inside the fork and inside the shock that ups the level of performance, not just the dials on the outside. It's a bit stealth. It is stealth and like, it looks like the cheapest version of the, it looks identical to the cheapest version, but when you ride it, it's not. And is that the same with the shock thing yep. you've got? Yeah, with the shock. So this is the new Float X. So the same shock that you get on the Canyon, but it's one tier above the specification on the Canyon because it's performance elite, not just performance. So that means you get also get a low speed compression adjuster on the bike so you can kind of dial in your low speed damping. And that probably gives them a little bit more leeway too and even on their high speed compression. So what they do with the tune, the two things aren't fixed together. You've got, a, you've got some, some independent control over it. So you said this was a high anti-squat bike. How did that affect the ride and the performance? Well, it pedals amazing. The steep seat angle, the longer chain stays and the relatively high anti-squat means that you kind of, they could probably get away without the low speed adjuster. You don't really, you, they could definitely get away without the platform lever. Um, okay. You don't need to firm this bike up. It impacts the handling in other ways too. So you just sit there and spin up the climbs. It's like, it's, re it's a real no brainer. You don't have to, th you're not reaching down. Like with the YT, I'd, I'd kind of reach down and turn the compression on and stuff. And so just to stop it sagging in this bike, you don't even think about it. And because it's got the long stays, the anti-squad also holds you up in the travel. You can run the bars pretty high, which is good because it's a big bike. So it kind of brings the bars back towards you a little bit. And you just, you just, when you start descending, you're just in this, you've got this big long wheelbase, you've got a high handlebar, but you've got no problems loading the front end. The, the front end's loaded and you've got the grip two damper. It just works really, really good. So it's a, like a really commanding position. It's probably the most similar to a modern enduro bike off the bikes in this test. So like, whereas the 161 was kind of built as an enduro bike that you could ride trails on, this is like a trail bike you could probably race okay. enduro on. Yeah, it's also like a quite rider focused, am I right? In terms of like external cable routing and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I mean. Big bearings. Yeah, it's, it's simple to service. Like, there's no internal cable routing apart from the dropper post. It's like super service friendly. There's a couple of little things too. It's, it's got quite an eclectic build kit. Like it's got parts we don't see very often. They haven't just done the, the one-stop shop yeah. Shimano Fox or SRAM Rock Shocks. So they've got Fox suspension, then they've got a Shimano SLX drivetrain, but they've, they've done a really cool little thing with it. They've paired it with an XT shifter. So instead of going with the XT derailleur, which is what most people do, and you go, oh, I've got XT. Yeah. It's hidden here, but that means you've got the, the, the double release. So when you drop into like a steep trail and your bike just picks up speed real quick, you can just dump two gears at a time. So you can dump four gears basically with just two clicks. So you're in, so you can basically start pedaling and you're in the right gear. And also they've got Magura brakes. Yeah. Like, I mean, how many bikes do we see with Magura brakes? Yeah. We see a couple of e-bikes Yeah. and the MT5. I mean, everyone that rides the Magura brakes, maybe because we don't ride them enough, you get on them and you go, oh my God, these brakes are really good. They're four piston and they've kind of got the power of XT, but without the snappiness at the beginning. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. And they've also got one up seat post yep. as well, which one -up is pretty seat cool. Post is excellent. Like... You've got Schwalbe tires. I like the hands down, the Magic Mary combo. They've got them in the soft, Attic soft compound. 
and like having the hands down from the rear definitely keeps the pace up a little bit it rolls a bit faster than in the magic mary and they've got the st casing so a little bit firmer casing not full enduro um, not lightweight xc just for a little bit more strength and stiffness and like it protects the rim and you're not going to get a sidewall tear as easy so it's a really well considered bike yeah, yeah. and also obviously being a uh, part of the hunt stable we've got the hunt wheels hunt as wheels well. yeah so you've got lightweight wheels with with fat, rapid engagement on the rear hub like it, I mean, you notice that when you come off maybe some of the bikes with like the, the cheaper GT Swiss wheels where they don't have like the super fast engagement. Um, this bike's basically you put, you drop the hammer, boom, she's gone. Okay. It's like, it's really good. So what rating did you give the privateer? I gave it a nine. So the same rating as the Canyon that we're about to see in a minute. Um, so both those bikes are level pegged. Um, one, I don't think one's better than another. Just have, they just have different approaches. And we'll get into that when we take a look at the canyon. Okay, well, let's do that yeah. now. Yeah. So last time we did our trail bike of the year test, canyon wasn't involved because there was no 29 inch spectra, was there? But now we've got this. So this is the CF7. So this is the entry level carbon bike in the spectral range. It's alloy bikes below it. Yeah. So how much is this coming in at? So it's the second most expensive bike in test at 3399. Okay, that's still yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, like it looks expensive. It's the frame is sleek. Yeah. Yeah, and all the integrated yeah. parts and stuff. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool bike. Travel wise, um, it actually has the most travel on test because it's got a 160 mil fork and a 150 mil rear. Last year they did some kind of mix and match where they had split between Rock Shocks and Fox where the RockShox bike had 150 mil for it, the Fox bike had 160. This year, well, they all have 160. Okay. Makes it so simple. Makes it, yeah, yeah, easier to understand. So uh, what's, what's changed on this new model? I mean, one of the most obvious things that, that Canyon's changed from previous Spectrals to the new version is they got rid of the external cable routing that ran along the underside. Then they had, they had the ex, they had, they had external cable routing that had a cover on it, and it made it real simple, and people really liked it, but I think this bike actually looks a lot sleeker with the full internal cable routing. And it's tube in tube, isn't yeah, it? So yeah, it's, it's simple, it's, pump yeah. it in, pump it out. It should be pretty straightforward. And obviously when you get a full carbon frame, something has to give, but when you look at this bike, you don't give much. Yeah, it's got DT Swiss wheels. It's got a great tire spec. It's got the Minion DHR2s front and rear in the C3 compound, and they've even tweaked the casings. So you get the lighter, XO on the front and you get the XO plus on the rear for a little bit more reinforcement and like with all of the kind of clever specking they've done and the carbon frame I mean this is the lightest bike in test it's 14.14 kilograms which okay. is pretty impressive for yep. also being the longest travel yep all right so there must be something about it then that's yeah lacking and it's and it's kind of hard to spot yeah. but it's what we've been talking about through this whole test is that it's got a 36 but it's got the rhythm 36 so it's the most basic model of 36. So you've got the older lower legs, so you don't get the, the self-aligning axle. You don't get the kind of the lubrication channels on the back of the legs. You don't get the bleed ports. You don't get the in indexing on the, on the adjuster. And all of that taken together, I mean, one of the big improvements that Fox made um, with the current line of forks is friction reduction. And that was all in the chassis and you don't get any of that. So the fork's not quite as good as the forks on the other bikes. Okay, and what about the shock? Um, the shock, again, it's the new Float X, but it's the performance level. It's pretty good, like it feels good, but last year I rode the CF8 and it had a DPX2 and I preferred it. To be fair, it was a higher spec, yeah? But I thought that bike, that bike pedaled really well and I thought the suspension like definitely had a pedaling focus so it made it a good trail bike but you had this shape where the this bike's got the slackest head angle on test it's just just above like 64 degrees they're all in the 64 64 and a half mark but this is the slackest bike in the low position so the bike's got like good reach it's got good weight distribution it's slack when they released it if everyone just went oh my god your trail bike's got more progressive geometry than your enduro bike and some of the enduro riders actually raced on these. They, they? do, um, but the fastest enduro rider in the doesn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a reason for that. And I think it's about suspension feel. This bike's definitely more focused on, on pedaling. You've got 150 mil on the rear and it gets pretty close to it too. Like you, you can, when I measured the travel, I think it was 147. So you've got the suspension there. But I just think that that basic um, Flodex shock, I, I found it a little bit overdamped. 
Um, I think it's a bicycle quite high anti-squat. I'd maybe like it a little bit lighter on compression or faster on rebound. I'm not sure exactly what it is that I didn't 100% gel with, but this bike didn't feel as good as the bike I rode last year. And like, I kind of got a bit caught up in that. And then I realized, hey, hold on a second. You're not comparing it to the bike you, you, you tested last year because that bike was more expensive. Yeah, that bike yeah. wouldn't make it into this test because it was over, like four, it's over four grand. So then I kind of like worked my way back and go, hold on a second, what are we looking at here? And it's actually an amazing bike. I think you could probably, if you wanted to, you ride it for a year, two years, upgrade the fork, make some changes maybe. Like, in, like it's a bike that could definitely grow with you as your riding progresses. Or you could just ride it because it has a package. It's, still it's really a really good. good bike. I rated it a nine. I gave it the exact same rating as a privateer. Like I said, different approaches. The money's in the frame. Privateer's money's in the suspension and the wheels. You decide. Yeah. So did the uh, the suspension kind of have an impact on the ride quality? Or was it? Yeah, not massively. Okay. That's the thing. Like, and what's really interesting with this bike, it's quite stiff too. And I don't know if that's just how the suspension feels. Like stiffness is. It's hard to determine whether the stiffness is from the chassis or from the suspension. They both give you kind of a similar response. But what I found with the Canyon was the harder I rode it, the better it felt. Okay. If you ride it hard, I think you get a lot of it because the riding position is really good on it. It's got really good geo. I just found that it sort of sank in a little bit more climbing than, than I remembered the old bike. It didn't seem to be quite as plush on, this, on the rear suspension. But then you ride some big rough trails hard and fast mm -hmm. and you feel really confident on it. And, um, and the bike just doesn't falter. Okay. I mean, there's, there's definitely stiffness in the frame. Right, real solid bike. Yeah, yeah. it's a solid bike, yeah, yeah. So that just leaves one more bike, and uh, it's the Vitus. Absolutely. In our last trail bike of the year test, the Vitus Escarp came last, didn't it? And now... Well, that's changed since then. <laughs> it has, everything. <laughs> yeah, it's a completely different bike. Changed the suspension layout, the geometry. It, it's unreal what they've done. And like, I should make it clear at the beginning, this is the most expensive bike in the test. It's three, four, nine, nine, ninety nine. But also you get by far the best spec. Yeah, and we were just saying a minute ago, weren't we, that it actually looks like a 27 and a half inch wheel bike, doesn't yeah, it? Which is, you know, unlike, and you always, when you do a test and stuff, you always like go, really, did I get it wrong? And I think it's a combination of the, the frame layout where the down tube is closer to the tire. And then all of the other bikes have got quite low slung seat stays. And this bike, because it's got the vertical shock, the seat stays come a little bit higher. It just makes the wheels look smaller, yeah. but it's not a compact bike. It's compact in the sense that it's got good standover. Um, but it's got modern geometry, progressive sizing. Um, it's got geometry adjust. It's got a slack head angle. It's got all the features you'd expect from a modern frame. So they've really brought it up to date, haven't they? Yeah, totally. And so it's got a carbon front end, an alloy rear. So it's got the mix in the two materials. So you're not getting the full carbon frame like you get on the Canyon. And they've done some interesting things. It's got like the shortest chainstay length of the bikes on test. So they've got no seat stay bridge here. So that allows them just to tuck. I mean, it's a specialized trick. Um, you tuck the rear wheel in a little bit closer. You don't have to worry about like clearance of bottom out. Gives the bike a kind of a sort of snappier feel yeah. maybe in, in turns and stuff. What, what does that do to the climbing though? Well, if they'd done nothing about it, it probably means that the front end with the suspension would sink in, the front end would lift. But what they've got is they've got sort of proportionally steeper seat angles. Okay. So as you go, it's got four sizes. And as you go up through the size range, the seat angles get steeper because they're, they're declined and as the saddle goes up, it goes back. So to stop the tallest riders being over the rear axle, they just chip the, Makes the, a lot of sense, the yeah. seat angle forward. So you're still sat forward on it and the reach is generous enough that it doesn't feel um, compact when you're climbing. I wouldn't say it climbs as good as the privateer, but then there's other benefits to, to this bike that okay. we'll get into in a second. So this has got an amazing spec. Where, where do we start, really? I don't know. Like, well, let's start <laughs> gold, with the let's start gold, with the gold bit. Forks. Let's start with the gold mm, bit. Shock, yeah. So factory level suspension. It's Fox's top of the range suspension. It's got everything they've got. They throw at it. I mean, how how much is one of those forks like on its own? I think they're eleven, twelve hundred yeah. pounds. Like the 38's twelve, I think. I mean, it's expensive. It's an expensive piece of kit. And I think in the past, maybe Vitas had a reputation for throwing really good stuff at their bikes and maybe like that would give them an edge in the test but this bike's got the frame and the spec it's it's a, it's the complete package i mean that, that's that's what made it so stand out and another interesting thing about their suspension is they haven't gone with a piggyback shock yeah all of the other bikes have got the kind of reservoir on it and they've just gone with an inline dps shock 
And this bike is buttery smooth and it's dead silent. There's no sound from it at all. There's no cable rattle, there's no chain rattle, there's, there's nothing. It's just, you just go down the trail and all you hear are your tires on the trail. It's amazing. So the suspension on this was really good? It was really good. Like, I mean, it's got a three position uh, pro pedal adjuster on this shock. You've got three compression settings and you've got micro, three micro settings. So you can kind of tune it to how you want for, for I'd say climbing mostly, because I run it in the open setting for everything, apart from maybe the occasional time I'd put it for climbing. I just put it into the mid setting and then have the lightest threshold. Yep just for a little bit more support and stuff, because you have got those short chain stays, like that really helps like just keep the rear end propped up and keep you going forward. But in terms of travel, it's 140 on the rear, 150 in the front, and it's smooth. There's no, it's not too progressive. It's not wallowy. There's, there's support in it, but it's, it's, it's incredibly sensitive. Okay. It's just good, tr there's good traction on the rear. So how does it sort of uh, fit in with the, with the other bikes? We've got the Privateer that's more Enduro. We've got the, the Jeffsy, which is a little bit more agile maybe. I think it's the best balance of all of them. I mean, we did some test runs and I remember saying to you, I just feel like I could ride this bike for another 20 minutes without getting like arm pump and sore feet or whatever. And it's just, it's just so smooth, so quiet. They've done an amazing job with it. Like it's, yeah. there's not a single thing on this. Actually, that's not true. There's one thing on the spec that bugged me, and that's just the, the remote for the dropper. It's just a little bit heavy. And we've had that on, and we've got one of these bikes, the, the next model down is um, Ben Day's long-termer. He had the same problem with it, where just the cable action's a little bit heavy. And that's the only thing on the spec that, that, yeah. that really you, you would even consider changing. You've got a full XT drivetrain. Mm. You've got XT brakes. And they've done something interesting with that too. So with the XT brakes, they've got a twin piston caliper in the rear and a four piston caliper in the front. Yep. I'm not totally sold on it because yeah. when I look down at a bike, when I've got cooked brakes, it's always the rear brake that's cooked, not the front, but they're thinking about it. They're thinking it's a trail bike. Maybe we don't need as much power in the rear. We've got the dissector rear tire, which is a good combination if you want more like pedaling efficiency and like lower rolling resistance. They've got an NASA guy on the front. I mean, it's a great front tire. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing about it that you just think, oh, I'm not sure about that, or I don't know about that. It's got a higher spec DT Swiss wheel than, than all of the other bikes with DT Swiss wheels. Yeah. It's just one notch above every other bike in terms of specification. And then it has a ride quality that takes different aspects of each of those bikes and puts it together. They made my job real easy this year because I probably spent more time working out the order of the other three bikes, yep. not this one. It was standout. Then. It was totally like yeah. standout in terms of the build kit and standout in terms of ride quality. So a deserving winner then? Absolutely. I mean, you take one look at this bike and I must have triple checked I had the right bike for the test. Because every time you look at the price, I'm like, oh, is it, you know, have I got the right one? Is, it, is that the right one? Is the model name? I'm confused between the model names. Make sure I've got the right spec. Is it, I mean, you might have to go to four and a half grand from another direct sales brand to get this build kit. Yeah, yeah. If Vitas can hold that price in with, this, with a similar specification for next year, it'll be a miracle. And bring in some stock. Yeah. yeah. But there is also obviously like, we are talking about Ben's bike, that yeah. was a 2,700 yeah. pound bike. And the entry level bike comes in under, under two grand. It's insane. With and the it's same still frame. got the same frame. It's, just, it's got the it's carbon frame, alloy rear end. It's impressive. I mean, they're killing yeah. it. There's not much more to be said about well, yeah. that. I mean, like fingers really crossed. Are. If you're watching this video and, and you really like the idea of this bike, I mean, you should like the idea of this bike because it's a great bike um, that you can get hold of one. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. But this is only half of our Trail Bike of the Year test. We've also got four shop-bought models. So go and check out that video. It's definitely worth your while.